Hey, what's going on, everybody? All right, we're back for the second episode. Marvin left off. He was just about to tell us, I love... What? What was that? What was he fixing to say? He was fixing to tell us something very important. Um, and I kind of teased one of my subscribers and good friends uh, that's over here at Landstar. <laughs> I kind of teased him about this episode, but I told him, I said, man, you better make sure you watch episode number two, because we're talking about you. So he knows who he is. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Um, and like I said, I'm always here trying to help you out when I can, man, as much as I can. But anyway, this was a great interview. Uh, this is the second part of a three-part series, uh, three-part episode uh, with our great friend Marvin BC over here at Landstar that's killing it, man. He's going to talk about his days off, how much money he makes, all that stuff you're going to find out doing a dedicated route over here at Landstar. And he's fixing to give you that information right now in part two. So don't go nowhere. Get ready. Here it comes. <laughs> something like that. I love dropping hooks. <laughs> I'm lazy. I'm retired. I am not working hard. Dropping hooks. And then it's a light load. This load is ready already. It's ready. <laughs> I just right. talked to my man. This is this this that segment was for one person and you know who you are. Oh, I don't know who that is. He's a Landstar BCO and he when he first got here he got a trailer from Landstar, right? Yeah he'll give us a trailer. He got a extra lease trailer, right? It doesn't have all the, I guess, tracking on and stuff like the rest of it. I don't know. Anyway, they don't uh, they don't keep up with him on that one as much as they do the rest of it. And he has had that trailer ever since. And he's been here, uh, man, I want to say close to a year, maybe. I don't forget how long he's been here. But he's been here a good little while. <laughs> and uh, long enough, he should have done got rid of that trailer about yeah. 20 loads ago or so. But uh, he's making it. good money, don't get me wrong. He, he, he goes, gets loaded, he runs, he unloads, he reloads, delivers. He's making good money. But if you're going to keep that one trailer, you might as well buy your own trailer and make more money. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, put a few things on it that'll help you make more money. Oh, oh look, I understand him because sometimes when you got a pretty truck, you know, I you got yours all decorated and everything, I got mine all cleaned up, and you find a nice, pretty Landstar trailer. You don't want to do no more drop hooks. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Especially if you get a 670, 671, yeah. 672, those new ones. And you can go out to California with it yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Oh. That's nothing. Like he loves California. <laughs> yeah. So I understand that much, but uh, right now what I do, I, I, I'm hooked up to this trailer for six hours. Yeah. It only take five and a half hours to get up to Baltimore. Yeah. And that's it. So. Uh, now, now here's one of his concerns, and, and you can help address this concern for him because you do a lot of drop hooks. Mm -hmm. How many of the dropping hoops that you do in a typical month where you have trouble with the trailer and you have to have something done to it before you can do anything? Well, they told us, because we have had a flat tire here before, and um, all I do is call trailer people because we're doing this specialized, no, it's not specialized, but it's express freight FedEx. Um, we can't stop at a TA or nothing like that. Just gotta take it to one point back. So I don't know um, what you actually do. Um, well, it has to be an emergency on the road for us to actually stop, and then we have to call for emergency. Uh -huh. Other than that, if this flat tire, you can take the terminal and drop the truck. Just call Lance and say, "Hey, I just did a drop and hook when I did my uh, post trip. I noticed it had a flat tire. Uh, you need to call somebody to come out there and fix it. There's a trailer number. There's a location. There, they should take care of it because they're getting." Uh, what seven at least seven percent of your money that you could be getting so the least they can do is take care of that tire you know, that should be their responsibility in my opinion yeah I, I agree with your opinion on that however in our time my uh since the first of april since we started doing this i think we had three trailers with a flat tire and a call and came out? nope I, I don't know if it's the pandemic if it's other i don't i don't i don't want to make excuses for them but that is something that they should be able to handle, whether they're working at home or working in the office, they should be able to take care of that. Thank you, a thing. Yeah. And but then again, right here with 
we might bring that trailer in. Like, say I leave BWI on uh, at one o'clock on a uh, on a Tuesday morning. I get here at seven o'clock in the morning, and then they take the trailer inside the facility, and then I come out here and I do my ten hour break. Six seven o'clock that evening, that same trailer the yard jockey bring it back to me. So same trailer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what trailer is this? This might be the same. Now this is one I had this week though. It's not the one I brought down yesterday morning, but this is one I had this week. All right, another question. Since you do a lot of drop and hook, and do you ever log into the load port? I look at, the, I still look at loads from time to time. All right, when you pull up and you come up to the home page where it first comes up and gives you what you want to click on, do you ever get the red box? Oh, uh, plenty of times. If you're a Landstar plenty Lucero, times. you know about the red box. Plenty of times. And then they put, um, how many trailers do you have listed under your? The most I had was five. Yeah, I've had five or six yeah. or four listed on my name. And they and, and uh, they'll be all needing inspections. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not having been on that trailer in over a month. Why do you still have me on, on yeah. that trailer? But what's crazy? Here's the crazy thing: all the trailers have GPS tracking, so they know where the trailer is. They know the trailer needs inspection. That's why they put that red box on it, right? So if you know it needs inspection, you know where it's at, why not send a mobile unit out there to do the inspection? Well, I talked to one guy uh, at the trailer maintenance, because I told him that, uh, well, we can't do this with the dedicated, what we do right here right, with FedEx. Right. Um, and then y'all only paid us $25. Because uh, then they said that, well, they working on that, maybe they up it to $100. Yeah. Because you sit at a TA or someplace like that, it can take you all day. In Baltimore, me and Derek, right there, he, um, we go to Pacor. I'm telling y'all a secret, those who are in Baltimore. Don't do the TA in Jessup. You do the Pacor on um, in East Baltimore. The last time I did a 120 day inspection, uh, they open up at 6 o'clock. I get there at 6 o'clock. I'm out of there at 6.30. That's how quick they are. I go in and tell the lady, I say, I'm here to do an inspection. She said, truck and trailer. And um, I said, no, just a truck. She said, okay, I'm walking around, open the big door. I said, okay, I'm in front of the big door. By the time I get around there to the big door, and she got the door open. And it's just back it in, and they jump right on you. So, I love it. Yeah, I tell people to find somebody you like, take, take your truck every time every for your time. inspection. Yeah. That way you're not getting jerked around. You go to the TA Petros all over the country, you don't know which one you're going into, they may have an agenda. Yeah. And I have gone in there, and they yeah. found the nippiest, pickiest little thing and it's something that DOT won't even flag you on. Yeah. Like suppose your uh, air horn don't work, but your city horn works, or vice versa. Chances are DOT's not gonna get you on that. They only require one horn. Landstar requires two horns. Yeah. You have to have your city and air horn. See, DOT doesn't require that. So that's what I'm talking about. There's one guy on Facebook who is gonna contradict me on this. Because he's like, well, they need to find that because you don't wanna get uh, uh, points on your uh, uh, CSA. I agree, but there's some things that they look for just to try to make some money because they know you can't leave the shop till it's fixed. Correct. So I go to a shop where I don't mind spending my money, and I have the same guy do it every time. He knows my truck because he works on it. He knows how much money I put in it. You know. And, and the guy at the parkour in Baltimore, he said, "Do you have a, uh, the paperwork that I gave you before?" Because then he don't have to go and do the brake um, specs. I just showed him what he did last time. Not what he did, but the brake specs he talked about. I don't know what the brake specs are. Um, but I showed him that, and then he said, okay, good. So he don't have to get underneath there and then measure the, whatever he's doing. I don't know. So that's one thing I want to try to get in the new Volvo is the disc brakes. Uh, that's what oh. I'm hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do they have the disc brakes on the new ones? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, right. not, on, not standard, yeah. but you can get the disc brakes. I want to say it might come standard with the front disc brakes, I'm not sure, but you get all disc brakes, and that's what I want to get. Like, that's why I don't want to go through Long Mountain, because all those trucks are spec the same. And I'll let you in on a secret that a, a salesman let me in on. He told me, because I told him, he was telling me the price on the Volvo that I spec'd out, and by the time I paid it off, it would be over $200,000. And I was like, I can go to, to Long Mountain and get one for 180 right. out the door. Right. And he, he just rolled his eyes, he's like, oh man, Long right. Mountain. He goes, they buy in bulk. They'll buy like two, three thousand trucks from one dealer, get a huge discount, and then they pass that savings, I guess, on to y'all. And uh, you can buy the truck cheaper than you can buy it at a dealer who doesn't make you get that big bulk discount. But let me, let me tell you this, um, because I got this is just my own little opinion. I don't know if it's going to be bad or good or bad for a Lone Mountain. 
This is the globe trying to truck. The globe trying is supposed to be top of the line as far as small boat. But this is, uh, in my belief, my opinion is the bottom of the line as far as a globe trial. Because the mirrors, you know, don't have the big handle mirrors and don't have all the little stuff like a uh, little guy had his, his Volvo. I just remember his Volvo. Before I got this, I was looking at his. That's beautiful. And all the little things, um, the airbags, the, the weight uh, gauge for the, uh, the drive. Yeah, don't have that. There's a lot of stuff that they don't have. Mine has that. It's a 2014. This is a glow tire. Yeah. Bottom line glow tire. And then the tires, they were Bridgestone tires. Brand new version, of course, with a brand new truck. But my tread depth wasn't, it was a little lower than what you have here. But it got there, the truck was sliding all over the place. In the rain, sliding, steady. I'm out there calling Jesus, 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 because I'm getting ready to stack night. So I had to get new tires. And I thought it was airbags. It was either airbags or tires, and it turned out to be tires. And it was Bridgestone tires, but maybe it's the bottom line Bridgestone. But they, you say they mass produce them, so they just yeah. put them together, I guess. And it's not good quality. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that's good or bad for a long mountain. So maybe it's worth them. a little bit more money to go through a deal. Yeah. Well, here's what I did the math on it, and it came out pretty much dead even, except for like you're talking about with all the extra stuff. The uh, the fuel mileage you lose buying the truck from uh, Long Mountain versus the money, extra money you spend at the dealer to get better fuel mileage kind of offsets the pricing. So, you know, you're, either way you go, you're going to end up paying about the same. Right. So it may be better than to go to a dealer and get the truck spec like you want since you're going to be paying that money anyway. You get the better fuel mileage. That way you got your disc brakes, you don't have to worry about your brakes, and uh, you got a little bit better interior and everything else like you want as well. And I talked to him about the airbag, his front suspension, and the guy says, no, nah, I don't waste your time on that. He said, yeah, you won't really like it as much as you think. So, but I stood back here and I just glanced over this truck, right? He's got his tires shining, they're looking good. And right off the bat, I noticed you do have the bridge stones on the drives. I have the Goodyear Endurance, and uh, but we both have the same steer tire. We both have Michelin. Because I, I, well, I just bought them three weeks ago. The tire place I went to in Baltimore, um, I like them, but they didn't have Bridgestone, so I know Michelin's. You did good. Yeah. That's where you want yeah. to go. Michelin's yeah. the best steer tire you're going to buy. Did you get the 16 ply? You got me. Okay. Is it the uh, X line? Why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> I'm retired. I don't work hard. I don't even want to know nothing. I just want to know where the gas and the brake is. <laughs> I'm retired. I'm not working hard no more. <laughs> because I don't know if your truck may be spec'd out for 13.2 on the front end, so you can haul more weight on your steers than 12,000. Oh, um, I know where my fifth wheel is because I move my fifth wheel up anymore, then I'll get overweight. Yeah. So I had it up before mm -hmm. in Tennessee. It always went through Tennessee. They always stopped and give me trouble in Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, I was overweight and then trying to move your fifth wheel while you're loaded. Yeah, very hard. that landing gear down and take some of the pressure off. Oh, I didn't do that. I yeah. just went bang! <laughs> I was going bang! <laughs> Everything out of my truck was falling down. Yeah, crank, so, that, uh, crank that landing gear down and yeah. take the pressure off of it just enough to where it's still locked in and you can move it a lot easier. Yeah. And it'll slide easier for you. I'll remember that next time if I have to do that, which I hope not. I'll try to <laughs> so, so you've been here a year at Landstar. Would you recommend if somebody's thinking about buying a truck, uh, coming oh, yeah. to Landstar? I'll say that in a heartbeat. Yeah. There's a lot of freedom. You get to pick and choose when you want to run, how long you want to stay out, when you want to go home. The, the two weeks I left Landstar in January to go to the company that can get me home, they said on the weekends. I have to ask if I, you know, look, I need to have this day off and I need to have this day off. I get there 32 years at the post office. And I made it all the way to the uh, third from the top before I retired. And I still had to ask, you know, for days off. Landstar, you don't have to ask, you don't do nothing. You just you want to go home, go home. Yeah. And then go, and you don't have to ask nobody. You want to be free. I want to be free. I got a buddy I, I met at Mercer. He trying to get me over to Great Wide. I'm not going to Great Wide. I got freedom over here. Look, I know you might say you're making this kind of money, that kind of money over there at Great Wide. I want to be free. You don't understand. <laughs> when maybe when you retire and you free to do whatever, Maybe you understand that.
But when you, you want your freedom to be able to come and go wherever you want to, hey Miles, you go and come wherever you want to go. And with Landstar, you do that. And, and make some money. You know? I mean, what can you do? Look, I'm going to tell Can I tell them the money I'm making here? I'm home three times a week. I live in Baltimore. Pick up in uh, BWI, the airport there. Come to the airport here in Greensboro. 364 miles. That's 500, um, five hours and five and a half hours of driving. That's it, six hours total of driving. A lot of people out there working eight, 10 hours a day. I do that five days a week. I'm getting ready to do five days a week. Five days a week. I'm home on Thursdays, home on Sundays and Mondays. And my bed. And my check. It's. How much? How much money are you making? Oh, come on, man. You was just about to tell us. It was, you make, you make this. And you stopped. Oh. <laughs> come on, man. You got to tell us how much money are you making on this round. I want to know. Do you want to know? All right. Then you got to come back for the final episode to find out how much money he's making on this route. You're going to be surprised. It's a good big number. Uh, to be home as much as he's home and to make that money, I would do it in a heartbeat. So y'all hang around. Come back for episode number three, and we'll find out, final episode, uh, what kind of money old Marvin's making over here at Land Stars. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This guy is really cool, man. If you would, leave a comment down below and just tell him, say, hey, man, thank you for doing this interview, and uh, and let him know how much you appreciate it. Because, I mean, he took his time. That He could have been... He could have been 50 miles down the road by the time we finished that interview if he hadn't hung around, you know, just went on home. So everybody, thank him for doing it for me. If you would, please, I appreciate it. He's, uh, like I said, he's a really cool cat. I really had a fun time talking with him. Hope I get to do it again. But um, anyway, y'all come back and we'll catch out. Uh, we'll catch the final episode number three and find out how much money that man is making to pay for that big, beautiful Volvo. <laughs> but again, thank y'all so much for, uh, or like it, subscribe, and clicking that little bell so we'll be notified every time we upload a video. Thank you so much. And y'all come back and we're gonna find out what kind of money old Marvin's making. All right. <laughs>